So in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to port forward a Minecraft server. There are basically three parts to this, setting up the server files, port forwarding, and set the running the server, which is super easy. Um, this tutorial is going to be mostly useful for, pe for people who are using a D-Link router because that's the interface that I'm going to be showing you, so keep that in mind while I do this. To set up the Minecraft files, the first thing you're going to need to do is download the server.exe or the jar. Uh, just Google Minecraft server files. Oops, spelled that wrong. Anyway, it's going to be the first result, even if you spell it wrong, minecraft.net slash download. Go down to this section right here, multiplayer server. If you're running a Windows machine, just download the exe. It's easier. If you're if you're running a Mac or a Linux machine, you're gonna have to download the jar and run it by the command console. Uh, kind of annoying, but whatever. Uh, download the exe. I've already done this, but I'll just do it again for the benefit of you guys. Once it's finished downloading, go to the folder, and you're gonna want to move this to wherever you want to save your folder, uh, I mean your server files. Just make a new folder, name it server, pretty generic. Paste it in here. You're gonna wanna run it once, and the first time you run it, it's not really gonna do anything. It'll generate like three files, and see that? The window will pop open, but then it'll close pretty much immediately. And that's because you have to accept the EULA, this EULA.txt here. Open it in Notepad or whatever. Just use Notepad, it's easier and you're gonna to wanna to set it to true. This is just the Mo Mojang Minecraft server legal stuff, saying that you accept all their terms. After that, save it, uh, run the server again, and this time the window will open, it'll stay open, and it'll also generate a bunch more files. Um, so this is the server GUI actually, and when it's on, that when, I mean when it's open, that means the server is actually running, but we don't need it right now, so just close it. So the, among these files that it just generated, open server.properties, uh, use Notepad if you have, or if you, you know, have some other code editing program or plain text editor, use that. I have Notepad++ installed. So I'm just gonna use that. The only line that really that's important here right now is server port. You see here, server port 25565, that's the default port that Minecraft servers will generate when you run them. So, and I, and I, I kind of doubt that anything else is going to be using that port, so you don't really have to change it. Uh, what you're going to want to do is open another window of Notepad uh, and make a little note, note right here, server port, and then just paste the number because we need this later. Um, and that's about it. You don't really have to change anything here, so you can just close it without saving. Uh, but before I close it, I might, might as well mention this line right here, line 14, level seed. Basically, if you want your server to use a certain seed to generate the world, just paste it in here and save it, and then run the server, and it will generate the world for that seed. Um, something else might be online mode. Um, this is basically a line that the server will identify people who have an invalid session ID, or aka someone who doesn't have a legit version of Minecraft, and basically prevent that person from entering the server. So, you know, you might want to set it to the opposite of true if you got some friends who don't have a legit version of Minecraft. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to close this. Um, I'm going to yeah, actually that's it. That's it in setting up the Minecraft server. Um, now what you're going to want to do for the next phase, port forwarding, is get your internal IP address. There are two ways to do this. The first and easier way, because you don't have to look at as much stuff, is go hovering over your um, network in the system tray, opening the network and sharing center, and you know the router that you're connected to that you want to use to port forward. Mine is this one, Cabbages Cabbages. Click on it, go into details, and you're going to want to get the IPv4 address, not the subnet mask or the default gateway or the DHPC or the DNS servers. You want to get your IPv4 address. You see that? Uh, write it down or copy it or it's, I don't know. I'll just write it down, I guess. Uh, IP. Um, this is your internal IP, by the way, which is basically, there are two 
there are two IP addresses that we're going to be messing with today, internal and external. The internal IP address is basically what the router uses to communicate with your machine, the address that it knows your machine is at. And the external IP address is what the internet uses to communicate with your machine. So basically the internet goes through your router because the router is outputting that external IP. And whoops, no, don't close that. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, once you've got that, just close it. Close this, close that, move this to the side. And oh, right, the other way to do this would be to open your command prompt by typing CMD and running ipconfig, oops, ipconfig, and just looking for, if you're connected to your router by Ethernet, then it'll say Ethernet adapter or Ethernet adapter for whatever your like local area connection. But since I'm connected by LAN, I mean by Wi-Fi, mine says wireless LAN adapter. So wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi, and it'll be right here, IPv4 address. You see, it's the same, same thing we wrote before, IPv4 address. Oh, that was my phone, sorry. Um, so once you've got that, Okay, shut up. Okay. Um, once you've got that, you, you've written it down, you want to go to your admin interface. So you do need admin um, permissions to do this. Oh my god, okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so once you've got that, you're going to want to go into your admin interface. Because I'm using a D-Link router, my, I already know what my... Um, what the IP for my admin interface is. I'll paste it right here. If I can find some other ones, I'll paste them in the description. They might work for you, they might not. They might have been changed, but you can just Google it. Just Google IP admin interface and then whatever the brand of your router is. Um, so you're gonna wanna put your password in and log in. For D-Link, you wanna go to advanced. Uh, there are two things you could use here, virtual server or port forwarding. Just use virtual server, it's simpler. Um, but you can use either or. Uh, you're gonna want to name it. So Minecraft server is what I'm gonna name it. Super boring. Um, and this, for this uh, IP address filling out, you're gonna you could either copy and paste it, or you can just get your computer name. This might have been actually the easier way instead of having to go and get your IP v, IP v4 address. But whatever. We already went and did it. Um, copy the server port number and just paste it in both public and private. For protocol, you want to set it to both. Schedule always, inbound filter, allow all. And check mark it. Save it, but you're not done after this, so once you get to this screen, reboot later. Uh, go into setup. Um, the problem that some people experience with port forwarding is that whenever your router resets or when your internal IP address expires on your router, because they do expire, like you can see here, this unknown host name, the, their assigned IP expires on the third, on seven, May, say May 17th of 2012. Wait, what the fuck? That's weird. Okay, anyway. Uh, so in order to counteract that, what you want to do is to reserve an internal IP for your machine. Um, so for D-Link, you want to go to Setup, Network Settings, scroll down to Add DHCP Reservation, enable it, and then again, get the name of your computer, and yeah, just save it. And it, now this computer will always have this IP internal IP address reserved, so I'll never have to like go back and go to the advanced and virtual server and change the IP address that it was assigned to. Um, so once that's done, save the settings and now finally you can reboot. So I'll come back after I've done that. Okay, we're back. Um, once your router reboots, you'll probably get taken back to this screen or it'll show you like an error page like it did for me. I had to reload. Um, but once you're done, you can just close your browser. You don't need it anymore. And that's it. You can now just go into your server folder and run the server. So, just, okay, now it's running and you can go into Minecraft. I'll cut into it. Okay, so I lied about not needing your browser anymore. I forgot you guys need to get your external IP address. So just Google IP in Google and it will show your IP address. I'm blocking mine. So that 
no one tries to attack me. Okay, so now once you're in Minecraft, just go into multiplayer, uh, add a server, name it whatever you want. No one's gonna be able to see this except you, so it's just for your benefit. Paste your external IP address, uh, click done, and that's it. You can now connect to your server. And oh, oh, super lag because uh, gotta load everything. But yeah, you're done. So you can just whoa, that's super laggy. Um, it'll clear up once the load. I mean, once the world generates. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You're done. Enjoy your Minecraft server. Yay. Um, but there is one thing to note that this obviously can't. It only works when you're connected to the router that you set this up with. So, you know, if you've set this up on your laptop, don't, you know, go to Starbucks and then, you know, connect to the Wi-Fi there and then expect it to work because you, you don't you don't have access to Starbucks' as a router. You're not going to be able to port forward from there. Um, so, you know, set this up at home. Leave your computer at home. Turn it on. You can go somewhere else. You can go to Starbucks with a different laptop and, you know, play from the same server from Starbucks. Um... So, yeah, besides that, um, also I don't recommend running the Minecraft server and playing Minecraft from the same machine just because it kind of messes with the server. Uh, generally, just don't do it. Kind of, if you have an older computer that you're not using for anything, maybe dedicate that to running the server because um, it doesn't really use a lot of resources. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm thinking about maybe picking up a Raspberry Pi to set up a Minecraft server on just for like, I don't know, like maybe five or six people. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, I don't know, look me up. Yeah.